I'm like, man, I could see my brother. We're in the Middle East together, mm-hmm. you know, and it was a fantastic feeling. Uh, and of course, I'm in the squadron. He's on the ship. And so yeah. I had a little bit of more perks. Getting orders to Hawaii, which I had to go through California, which is a long story. My command was doing a home port change from mm-hmm. Moffett Field, California to Hawaii, uh, Barbers Point. I show up there and I would go to a pay phone, a literal pay phone. And I, and I got my brother's number from my mom and I called him up and I'm like, hey, what's up, man? You know, and he's like, hey, what's up? Why are you? I don't hear from you. I was like, hey, man, I'm on the corner. Corner of what? In the Bronx. <laughs> I need you to come, come get me, you know. And, uh, he picked me up. He was married, you know, a, a bunch of little babies. And uh, I was just super excited to be around him. Um, and it made Hawaii a little bit easier, even though it was paradise. That, that, yeah. I would say that was my number one state to live in, in the world. As far as a state goes, mm-hmm. there's nothing like that place. Blue skies, great weather, didn't rain as much. And just it's it's tropical paradise. It's like living in the Caribbean, but it's a state or if like you was in Puerto Rico or something. And uh, yes, in there and deploying. And back in those days, my brother and I were in the same battle group. So as he deployed, we deployed. I remember, you know, meeting him in the Bahrain gym, basketball gym before they had an actual (laughs) base there. And and I thought that was Uh so cool. He was already running a full. uh, I'm like, man, I can see my brother. We're in the Middle East together. Mm -hmm. Know, and it was a fantastic feeling uh, and of course i'm in the squadron he's on the ship and so yeah. i had a little bit of more perks access to the duty van to pick up him and his boys 15 deep and we can go uh-huh. on different, um, adventures and, and the best part is when we went to san diego on a, on a like a workup for deployment you know drive right down to the border of, of uh, tijuana right there and then we walk across the bridge you know, I wasn't that crazy as a young sailor but and, and go have a good time and you know compared to like today's age yeah uh, when i joined it's, and I went to San Diego boot camp. You could, you know, okay. drink on base at seventeen. They really didn't want you to go over the over the uh, to Tijuana because you know a lot of people got robbed and beat up and came back with no shoes, no mm-hmm. ID. And uh, I was able to go down there and have a really good time. So, uh, yeah, in, in a nutshell, you know, that's how how I kind of started. You know, yeah. my career uh, as a as an AO aviation ordnance man out there dealing with weapons out the, outdoors. I needed something that would keep my attention be behind a desk i'll fall asleep on you in a minute a narcoleptic or something and uh that was exciting to me and i loved it i love the camaraderie i love the, the the fellowship the brotherhood the sisterhood that we had in there and uh you know fast forward from there i went to uh well i was forced at the time in the late 90s because of the brac and we were uh, hurting for people i was forced to go they said you either gonna take recruiting duty orders or we're gonna kick you out and i was like what kind of what kind of thing is this I wanted to do another sea tour or whatever. I was like, nope. We, we, they wanted to double the amount of recruiters they had and bring it up to almost close to 8,000 recruiters nationwide. And what that looked like is, you know, for any A school, C school that people go to, they, they, we had so many sailors, they had to create day school and night school for recruiting duty. You know, it, it was 24-7 school was, was popping. And they just threw us out there, you know, with very little infrastructure. You're talking about put four or five recruiters in what they had like before that weeks before there was only one recruiter in there. It was a closet, yeah. you know, <laughs> one phone line, you know, one desk and one chair. I remember having to go to the headquarters for recruiting command in New York and Long Island and, and, and go to supply. And, and they give me a box, a, a build a box desk to shove in the government vehicle, drive back to the office and kind of squeeze it in there as me and the next guy, we shared the same applicant chair. You know, uh-huh. it was it was a hot mess, man. You know, uh-huh. I, I drove my personal vehicle to go to school visits, got a ticket every day in New York because you, you can't understand the signs. I, you know, b- between, you know, the parking and uh-huh. uh, just, oh, man, it was, it was hard. And uh, but I was actually really good at it. Really talented in recruiting. Didn't want to lose my AO rating. But, I, 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 you know, I love the recruiting aspect, helping people change people's lives and uh uh-huh. The, the the crazy part is that recruiting at the time was very toxic. The environment, uh, it was un, it was not uncommon because MEPS was open every Saturday. That was normal for all services. We processed six days a week minimum. And then Sunday, you would have to probably pick up a person going to boot camp on Monday. So you work seven days a week most of the time. And uh, it was not uncommon to work till 
11 o'clock at night, midnight, you know, mm-hmm. talking to someone's parents or making phone calls or following up or doing a door knock in the hood in the middle of the night or getting up early to ship somebody out. And in that environment, people were, were converting from their rates and and becoming career recruiters. And that's what pushed me to not do it as quickly because I was like, this is crazy. This is this is insane. And uh, I was NAO one and I and I I could have converted as NC one earlier, but I decided uh, to wait and I waited to about five years and um, into recruiting and then I converted. And uh, okay. from there, from New York, went to Philadelphia. From Philly, I went to uh, L.A., which is like a very unique situation where I was in charge of Beverly Hills High School and then Inglewood High School. The two yeah. two different together, two different aspects of life where kids is yeah. pulling into parking lots with Bentley reserved parking spots, right? And where the the school officials would threaten me and threaten my life and threaten jail if I came on their sidewalk without an appointment, right? You know, in uniform. Uh-huh. And then you go right into Englewood, it's like, hey, whatever you can do, you know, if you can help mm-hmm. these kids. And those kids looking for opportunities. And then uh, from there, I moved over from, from L.A. That experience was great. I went over to, to uh, Houston, Texas, and that covers Louisiana and uh, in, in that eastern part of Texas. And then uh, then I moved on to, uh, from there, I moved over to Richmond, Virginia, which is where I met you at. Yeah. yeah. And uh, made 